Today is the day. I've been waiting for this day for, I was gonna say a long time, but actually years, <laughs> as you guys know, most of you. But this is the water maker that we are going to be installing now. It is the Schenker Zen 50. As you can see, there's the installation manual right there. And it's, a, it's available in 12 or 24 volt system. And we, of course, have the 12 volt system because that's what Sophisticated Ladies base system is. So. This is the Schenker Zen 50. It's capable of 50 liters per hour or approximately 13 gallons per hour. And I believe it's going to draw somewhere around 18 amps at 12 volts DC. So just over one gallon per, it's just over one amp per gallon, which is phenomenal efficiency. But that's because of this system here that they're using. And this is why one of these water makers is considerably more expensive than the average ones. You can get water makers in the area of $2,000, and this one's around $6,000. But the difference is, when you look at the long-term benefits of having a high-efficiency machine, you don't need to have a generator, first of all. So, I mean, if you don't have a generator in your boat already, you're looking at at least $2,000 for a generator that's gonna be able to power a suitably sized water maker. The average water maker this size has a pump on it that's gonna draw in excess of 100 to 120 amps at 12 volts DC. We have this system with dual pumps for redundant systems so that even if one goes down, the other one still performs. But between the two, they will draw about eight to nine amps each. So it's gonna draw a maximum of around 18 amps to do the same job, still producing about 13 gallons per hour, which is awesome. Of the system, we've got two major components, of course, which is the reverse osmosis or desalination plant, the system itself. This is where the membranes are. And if you can look in behind, you can see this one is all cased in, but in behind, this is where the pressure vessels themselves are. And they are all bolted together here, so the manifolds are on both ends. This is where all the water is plumbed between the membranes, but you don't need to have a lot of external plumbing, which means a lot less fittings that could possibly go wrong. You still have just the two main fittings here, which are transferring from the membranes outlet into the recollection system. And then from here, it comes back down to the pumps. So it's a very, very simple system designed with as few failure points as possible. And of course, every single high pressure point is a failure point. Most of the people that I've seen have problems with desalinators on their boats. It's always something with a hose or a fitting that's broken and they're in the middle of nowhere and can't find the fitting. So they end up waiting two to three months for something to be flown in that they can actually use. Back to the second main component, that is the pump system. So you can see again, we've got redundant pumps. They've got cooling fins on them with a cooling fan mounted on each one. That keeps them ultimately cool no matter how long you're running it for. All the plumbing is already hooked up. It's got electric solenoid controls to automatically turn the systems on and off. The electronic control box is on this side and this is the wire here. This wire comes with enough wire that you can run it anywhere you need in the boat and we'll go to the control valve. And the control panel here is just gonna mount wherever you want it to and this is where you can turn the system on and off, start producing water and go into the flush cycle. The subcomponents are the pre-filtration as the water's coming into the device. So this is the main seawater filter right here. It has a pre-filter, which is this guy here, which is more of a strainer. So this is just for removing debris from the water coming in from the ocean. And then from there, it's gonna go into this one with a small accumulator tank. So your seawater system comes in through here, goes through a five micron sediment filter. You never know how long the filters are gonna last. That completely depends on the water you're treating. So always keep lots of spares. And then there's a secondary filter. And this one is used for cleaning, uh, it's used for stripping chlorine out of the water because this is the back feed flush filter. So there's a line on here that automatically takes 
ster or purified water from your storage tanks when it needs to flush, because when you store it, you need to flush all the seawater of the system before you just shut it off and let it sit. So this is designed to take water from your storage tanks on board, run it through a carbon filter, and the reason for that is just in case you have used any carbon, or sorry, any chlorine in your water tanks, or if you've used a city water supply or anything like that at some point that has chlorine, you never want to have chlorine go through the system and hit the membrane because chlorine will instantly destroy the membrane. So, good thing to know, watch out for chlorine. You need to have one of these installed beforehand and it's just a simple block carbon filter 10 micron and this will do the job of effectively removing any chlorine and chemicals from the water that could damage your membrane. So that is going to be our first two things is to figure out where to put the reverse osmosis system itself, the desalinator, and where to put the pump. And I'm going to try and put them both into this enclosure right here. So this right here is actually our pump house for Sophisticated Lady, as we call it. So this is where the fresh water system is now. All of our filtration, the reverse osmosis system, the reverse osmosis pre-feed pump, the water pump for the whole boat, everything is right here. So the thing we're going to have to move is the reverse osmosis system to a different location and then work from there. So I'm going to open this all up. We're going to have a look and see what we are up against. So this is our pump house and I've got a lot of spare parts sitting in here, spare tubing, spare motors. This is an actual uh, high pressure feed pump for the current RO system. So we keep that here. Got extra pumps, you know, just backup pumps, spare parts even just for the water pressure pump in the boat itself. This is the main water pressure pump right here. The, the whole manifold system right here for selecting which tank we're going to use. So we've got three tanks on the boat right now. This is the aft port tank, forward port, and for forward starboard right there. So as you can see, we're on the port forward tank right now. And this is even spare parts for our current reverse osmosis, the drinking water system. We got a spare membrane, and we got spare carbon filters, string wound filters, everything we keep in stock right away. But we're gonna clear out all this stuff and see what kind of room we're left with at the end of the day. Okay, I've got all the devices that were in storage here taken out and everything disconnected now from the current reverse osmosis system. So we're going to take that out here. And that's this guy. And that's a Hydrotech reverse osmosis system and I've actually had that installed for almost 15 years and still works perfect. And remove the pressure tank. This is the storage device for the RO system. And it's full currently, so that we still get a little backup water in case this goes into more than one night. <laughs> and, alright, we can look at our space now. So what I was thinking is the desalination plant itself should fit almost perfectly right in this side right here. As long as it goes in and I can still see the meters and everything under here, we should be good. And then I've got this open area right here that I'm hoping will be enough room to put the power system, or sorry, the pump system. So that's what we're gonna have to find out next. We're gonna place in the water maker first and then we'll place in the pump and make sure everything will fit. If not, then we go to plan B, which is not written yet. <laughs> well, after much deliberation, and I mean much deliberation, <laughs> been playing a bit of a game of Tetris with this thing, but I think we've got it figured out a way that everything is going to actually fit in here and still be accessible and serviceable. That's the important thing. It's one thing to get it all in there, but it's another thing to be able to take it apart when you need to change filters or change a pump or anything like that. And so far it's looking pretty good. I mean, you saw we put in the, uh, the desalinator where I want it to fit right here, and that's good. Our water pump is still here. That's what you can hear running right now because we're using a little bit of water in the background. And we've mounted the booster pump for the reverse osmosis system. This is the, the reverse osmosis system here. It actually squeezes right in there just perfectly and sits. And then we've got the pump system for the desalinator right in the middle. Because it's on a rectangular platform and there's a piece of flooring in there and it, it fits just perfect like a glove right in the center, just like Central Park. So that's a thing of beauty. We've got the booster pump right here, so it's mounted on the wall right beside the manifold for the stock uh, water tank system. So we still have access to all of our tanks. We've got the pump system right here that can be pulled out with the removal of two screws. We've got the desalinator system that is going to be bolted in perfectly. It came complete with the custom L brackets and everything, and we've got just enough room where they'll be bolted in right here, and we put in a bolt through this piece of, not this piece, but over here, this piece of wood, on each end and one on the floor and that thing will be in rock solid. 
so that's going to be great. So everything's looking good. Uh, the pre-filters, we had to arrange them as well. I've just got, everything is just roughed in, so nothing is plumbed, nothing is wired. We just wanted to make sure it was going to fit and then be able to work around everything before I start actually hooking up all the tubing. We needed to figure out what kind of tubing we were going to need, how many feet of tubing. I mean, I've got some stuff on the boat, but I want to make sure we use the proper stuff. This is all high pressure, so we had to get some new tubing. We just sourced that on the island today, so I think, we, uh, I think we're good. We got everything we need from the looks of it. But when we start working, so the first thing we're gonna need is a saltwater feed. So that's under here. We're gonna go below the floor because I've got one intake that's right here. And this is an old pressure pump that was actually just used as a washdown. It was a saltwater washdown up on the bow of the boat. So there was a garden hose up in the anchor locker and if we wanted to use salt water to rinse off the, the mud off the anchor as it came up or anything, then that's what this was for. It's been dead for years, haven't used it, hardly ever used it. We just use a bucket up there anyway. But now I'm thinking I'm gonna remove all of this anyway because we don't need um, this sea strainer because the new system came with its own sea strainer. That's this guy as you see. And I've put this system together where it's gonna go below the floor right here where that pump is. So we'll take off all this old tubing. There'll be a brand new piece of tubing come straight into the strainer and up to the check valve. So the check valve is here to protect the system so that when it goes into fresh water rinse, because fresh water from our pump system on board, like from our uh, existing water system, comes into here to go through to flush the reverse osmosis system whenever it's finished making water, the desalinator, sorry. So that's gonna flush it with fresh water, but at the same time, we don't want fresh water to come in and go back through the sea strainer and out to the ocean, that would be wasting our water. So this is a check valve that's included in the package, and it just makes sure that when charged, uh, when pressurized water comes in through here to go back to the, the flushing system, it doesn't go out through the sea strainer. So that's all part of this assembly that's gonna go right here. And the other thing I need, of course, is a feed for the flush and that means that we have to go into the existing cold water system pressurized system on the boat all of those lines happen to be right here because there's a washroom here and a washroom there so we've got two gray lines one of them is cold and one of them is hot but well, we only need the cold one and the thing is with uh, with installing the desalinator it uses a completely different type of fitting than of course the boat system uses and the boats made in France as you know so everything is different but what I've got is one fitting from the boat, and this is all of the compression fittings that are used for the poly tubing, like you see down here, the, the 5 8 inch poly tubing. That is going to accommodate fitting the boat line, so it's going to be, we're just going to cut this line and put that T adapter right in there. I put a T shut off right here so that we can actually turn this line off, so if we develop a leak on this end, you know, going to the desalinator or, you know, wherever these other lines are going, we can shut it off and not have to shut down the whole cold water system so we can still use cold water throughout the boat. Even if we have a leak over here, it just shuts off. Normally this will be open and that's so that the system can flush. There's two outlets here and the reason I've got another T over here is because I need two cold water outlets. One is for the flush water system on the desalinator and the other is for our new laundry machine. Oh. <laughs> There's something you haven't heard about too often on a sailboat, but yes, we did get a new laundry machine. So we need to hook up some, uh, some T-fittings into our existing water system to get it water for filling. Now, right now we don't have two of these. We couldn't get enough parts to make two of these for now. So I'm just gonna use this one for the cold water and that'll do everything that we need. When I find another T-fitting that I can splice into the existing system, then we'll use that and we'll hook up the hot water later. So not a big deal. We don't have hot water that often anyway, unless we have a lot of sun, so not really a concern. But that's what we need to do now is start ripping this apart, taking out the old tubing, the old pump. And I'll leave the tube in here because that tube is a, it's a complete tube goes up to the bow and I will probably end up running that off of a fresh water discharge on the, uh, the fresh water system of the boat now. So that way when we are finished sailing, we'll have a hose up in the bow locker that pumps fresh water from the desalinator right out of our tanks. How awesome is that gonna be? And normally we have to sit there and wait for a hard rainfall to clean the boat, but now we'll be able to do it every time we come off sailing and keep everything nice and clean and not from building up salt. So that's going to be another big benefit of having a desalinator on board. So for now we start here, we get the seawater system installed here that's going to feed up to the main pump, and then we'll plumb that into the pre-filter and then the pre-filter into the desalinator. So that's step one. And we had to get different types of tubing, so 
we got normal tubing here, which is for the fresh water system, and it's up to, it's good for about 120 pounds per square inch. Our system runs about 50 to 60 pounds per square inch, so no problem there. And then we needed something very high pressure for the desalinator feeding system, and that's where this stuff comes in. This is good out to over 200 pounds per square inch. So everything looks good. We got everything we need. Then the other thing we need to hook up is power. So we found a good marine grade cable. I've got 8 gauge because this is going to conduct about 15 to 20 amps from here over to the, um, to the breaker panel. So that's going to be about 15 feet I estimated, so I got 20 feet just to be safe. So we're going to twist that up and get it ready to run through as a new harness and it will come straight down through here and up under there and straight into the control box for the pump. Well, first part of the operation is underway. So we've got this sitting in position, we've got the old lines cut off, the old pump is gone. This new line is here and it's ready to go on to the reduction union right here to go into the C-strainer. So now, because we still need to have pressure water coming into the, the check valve at the top here, now we've got to get into these lines here. And this is the house pressure system. So I've just shut off the water pressure and we've opened up the faucet to bleed all the water out of the system, all the pressure because this is a pressurized line and this is what we need to tap into to install my custom T-fitting here and uh, pray that it works. Because <laughs> if this one doesn't work, you know, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere and I don't know if we'll find parts to fix it, but hopefully this is going to do the job. So this is what we're going to use. So I've got everything taken apart and cleaned up. These are all compression fittings. So you can see that's the old fitting we took off that used to be inside here. And that's a piece of the old tubing and cleaned them all up so I've got everything ready. It's a four part fitting so we've got a compression ring itself, a ferrule, a rubber o-ring and then a retainer like a liner for the inside to stop the tube from crushing under the pressure. So we are about to cut this line and pray for the best. <laughs> so I've cleaned it all up here, I've cut it out of the main harness and I'm just going to cut it right here. And that's it. <laughs> There's no going back now. There goes our fresh water. So, we're going to push that line back a little bit. Because basically, we just need to open it up so that it is the same distance apart as this fitting right here. So it's going to get installed just like so. And then this new well, dual T fitting here, one side is going to go around here and up to the laundry machine and the other side is going to come around here and straight into our union on the uh, check valve. And then from here, the seawater system with the check valve for fresh water comes from here and around the side, up underneath and to the feed pump for the desalinator. So this is where the desalinator is going to get its water, whether it's back flushing or whether it's just drawing salt water to purify. So, we've got this cut now. Now let's start putting the fittings together and assembling them. Then we'll do a pressure test and hope that it holds. <laughs> okay. Got it hooked up. Both lines are in and tight. I've closed the valve because obviously I don't have anything hooked up to the outlets yet. So this is just stopping pressure from escaping. And now we're going to pressure test. So we're going to turn on the pump and all fingers crossed that uh, we don't see any leaks here, so you guys keep an eye on that. I'll switch on the pump. Pump coming on. So far so good. Let's open it up to see what happens. Okay, so Muy bueno. We're in business and no leaks. All right, now we can get back to just plumbing in some of the lines and get all these tubes hooked up and run over to the water maker. And then we have to pull the pump and the water maker out and prepare them for all the lines, the power wires, and good to go. You, man. You all 
Now you are being recorded, Rick. <laughs> past the limit of what I can lean here because this fucking thing is digging into my chest and this is just pissing me off big time buy a sailboat it'll be fun <laughs> living the dream boat bust out another <sighs> thousand <laughs> oh man can't get the fucking thing to turn Ugh. you